Our coverage of the Winter Nationals here in Pomona continues now with the Pro Stock Competition coming up next. The official announcing voice for the NHRA, Steve Evans, will bring you up to date with all the expertise. Steve, the Pro Stock Competition offers some mighty good matchups here, but I'm wondering, first of all, is this the type of machinery you might find on the street with some modifications? Yes, it is, Tom. In reality, these are the hottest of Detroit's high-performance muscle cars, as they're advertised. Dodges, Plymouths, Chevrolets, virtually every make and model represented. However, they're very, very expensive machines to prepare for drag racing. When these, pros, when these pros get through with them, there's really not too much left that originated in Detroit. The rules are very strict, but they do allow some modifications. We'll see 16 of the best, and they'll eliminate themselves down to eight. And we've got Bagshaw and Landy coming out first, Steve. Yes, we do. Dick Landy, a professional driver for the Dodge Division of Chrysler Corporation. He lives in Northridge, California. All of these pro stockers are equipped with four-speed transmissions, and they're really one of the most difficult cars in drag racing to drive. As we'll see, the driver very busy inside that cockpit. Here's Bill Bagshaw. Bagshaw, also a professional drag racer from North Hollywood, California. Calls himself the Red Light Bandit. Both drivers are away with green starts. A beautiful duel as they hammer the four speeds through the quarter mile. Dick Landy by no more than half a car length. This race will feature our defending champion car, the Hawaiian of Roland Leon from Honolulu, Hawaii. And the machine just now having its body latched down, Big John Masmanian of Whittier, California, and his driver, Rich Zerunian, who is also his nephew. The Hawaiian being driven this year by young Butch Boss, Boss of Westminster, California. And you can bet just as soon as the snows melt the east, this team will be headed out on their annual tour of during a drag strip all over the United States. That's how they make their living. Viva. I can't compete with that burnout, Steve. You know, the burnouts really have added an awful lot to the show, not only uh, as well as helping the elapsed time. Generally, at most drag strips around the country, the funny cars will go up to the starting line and do burnouts from the starting line, sometimes almost a full quarter mile and back all the way back up again. Obviously, there's not time for that at a big meet here like the Winter Nationals. I was about to comment that at first glance, a funny car just looks like a strange automobile. And then you see the driver sitting right dead in the middle of it, just as if it were any other type of racing machine, and you realize that it's something more than just what you'd see on the city street. That's true, and even though there's nothing on these automobiles that's stock, not even the body, they're made out of very, very lightweight fiberglass, they're just because there's a strong product identity factor. The Chevy, the Ford for the Chevy funny cars, and the Ford for the Ford, and so forth. Masmanian, utilizing a Plymouth Barracuda appearing, a replica of a Plymouth Barracuda. Driver Richard Cerrone, strapped in he's completed his burnouts and he'll meet the dodge of roland leon appropriately named the hawaiian inside the cockpit you can see butch moss moss moving up very slowly these machines utilize a two-speed transmission they have onboard fire extinguishers and every conceivable safety device the nitromethic fumes are very strong against the mass and unbelievable wheel stand by Richard Saronian, Moss blazes the tires to victory. You'll seldom see a funny car stand on the bumper like that, Tom. Take another look at it, Just Steve. That is really something. Incredible wheel stand, especially considering uh, that the drivers uh, think there's a lack of traction. Now you'll see the front wheels start to go skyward. Saronian not lifting at all, rocks over, and it may bounce all the way up. There it goes. Almost all four wheels off the ground. It could have done some severe damage to that $20,000 car. Pomona Raceway. Nope, it's pro stock, Tom. And here is a rematch from last year. Sox and Martins, Plymouth, Minnesota, from Burlington, North Carolina. And hey, Rob, can you bring that audio up for us? The Chevrolet fans' favorite of Berwyn, Pennsylvania. These two men faced each other for the title last year. And yeah, very good today. That was the last. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not getting any Sox audio on these at the moment. Didn't win. They've won everything since. Grumpy Jenkins is known because of uh, his real dedication more than anything else. You can't really talk to Bill in the pit area. He's very intent on what he's doing. As this doing. clip's not giving us audio at the moment, we can talk to you as it's going. But you can clearly see Ronnie Socks on the far side of the racetrack. Okay, and here we see the tree in the right-hand portion of the tree. Great, okay. We see the pro start and the two cars leave. A beautiful start. Jenkins may have been out first, but Socks might have let him get away, knowing he can drive around him, and he does. Ronnie Socks. 
989 the elapsed time for Sox. It's going to take a mechanical failure to beat him. Okay, here is a replay of it. Another pro stock race. The action fast and furious, and from this vantage point, it's very difficult to get a hold of them sometimes. In the left-hand lane, Akron Harlan Banke from Akron, Ohio. Here in the tower lane, a Plymouth Barracuda to challenge him. Banke is due for a major NHRA event win. He's been runner-up at two championships in 1970. He's got a race on his hands here. But he pulls it out. Harlan Banke moving into the semifinals. Dick Landy in the tower lane. In the far lane is Wally Booth and a Chevrolet. Booth from Ohio, Landy from Northridge, California. The Chevrolet fans are on their feet. The Chrysler Corporation products have been ruling pro stock, but look at this, and they'll cheer for this one. Wally Booth, the crowd goes nuts. Wally Booth, the most successful Chevrolet here at the Winter Nationals thus far. 992, and here it is again. Wally Booth and Dick Landy, both in the far lane, and he's pulling away inch by inch. A full car length lead and across the finish line. Wally Booth moving into the semifinals. We'll be back with more action from the 1971 Winter Nationals in just a moment. And here is Wally Booth. I guarantee you that if Wally Booth defeats yeah. Ronnie Sox with this independent, unsponsored Chevrolet, this place will be bedlam. Well, they both had some comparable times. Sox uh, to get to the finals at a 9.85 and Booth a 9.87. Ronnie Sox was either winner or runner-up of every major NHRA event in 1970. Look at the crowd beginning to come on to watch. Them. Even the horseback officers are trying to get to a vantage point where they can see this race. Wally Booth, the crowd is being pulled as to their favorites. And Booth out drew Sox three to one. But that's normal for the Chevrolet. They just seem to have more fans. Booth is staged. The biggest day in his drag racing career, the biggest moment. It's a green light start. Sox has an immediate advantage. The Chevrolet trying to catch it. He's not going to do it. No way. The king of pro stock. 986 for the Burlington, North Carolina team of Ronnie Sox and Buddy Martin. 141 miles per hour. <laughs> of course, a lot of the credit has to go to their mechanic, Jake King, and I'm sure Ronnie and Buddy will tell everyone that. The funny cars coming on uh, to the staging area and the uh, blue Hawaiian coming out first, I believe. And you were saying, Butch Maz, this is his first trip in this car? That is uh, first national competition? This is the first event in which he's competed with Roland Leong's Hawaiian. Butch was a top fuel driver, kind of an itinerant top fuel driver for a couple of years, one week in this car, one week in another car. Last year, he went on the road with Tom McEwen as a mechanic, and he worked so hard, and he did so well that Don Perdome gave him a chance to drive his top fuel dragster. Butch did at the Super Nationals and was the number one qualifier. Roland Leong took a look at that and decided that just might be the boy for my new Hawaiian, and it proved to be a wise choice. Looks like a happy wedding between the driver and the car. There were funny cars, and that's that. We've got the Ram Chargers fired up. The Ram Chargers are legendary for building more horsepower than anybody else. The big difference, and their big success has come from finally finding some reliability. They would always set low elapsed time, but the engines were like a grenade. The Hawaiians ready. Somebody once said that the Ram Chargers car is like a gun. They put a bullet in it, the bullet's the motor, they shoot it, they put another bullet in it. They've been known to bring a whole truckload of motors and you to use a motor every run. Incredible guys. Roland Leon could make it two in a row. He is the defending champion car owner. Roland did it here in 1966. When he won the Winter Nationals and came back the next year with a different driver and won it again. From the way they both burned out, they appear to be ready to go. Boy, are they ready. The tire, the burnouts are so hard that the tire smoke has even filled up the cockpit. Butch Moss may be having a little trouble seeing out of that car. 
Listen to that Ram Chargers motor. Just crisp and clean. Boss hanging in the back, trying to get those extra burn-ins. I would imagine that pretty soon Buster is going to make him come to the starting line. That was probably what the owner of the car was talking to the starter about. He's got his man working a little extra hard on it. May very well be. May prove to be a wise move. A good strong burnout can be worth 15 hundredths of a second sometimes. And that just could be the difference, the way these two machines have performed. Both cars are pre-staged. Neither driver wants to stage first. Finally, Goldstein does. Moss moves in behind him, and it's a beautiful start. What a finish. The Hawaiian. Roland Leon makes it two in a row. The first big win ever for Butch Moss, the first time he drives the car. Boy, that is almost an Horatio Alger story. Low elapsed time of the event for funny cars, six. 0.93 seconds, 212 miles per hour. Here's the replay. You just can't make them any closer than that. Not hardly. One Not hardly. car length between them at 400 feet a second. The announcer right now is saying, ladies and gentlemen, Don Garlitz, and that's the only introduction he needs. Look at Garlitz. He's already shaking hands, and he hasn't left the starting line. From Sefner, Florida. And I believe me, after this win and this new rear-engine rear -engine dragster, he's the undisputed king. And I think for the fans' sake, he smoked the tires on purpose. I think I know the answer to this question, but I'll ask you anyway. The future of the rear-engine top fuel dragster. Well, I think it's here to stay. I believe that we'll see lots of cars built now because Obviously, the car is safer. The driver, I ran all day long, never got anything on my helmet or anything. It was just a nice, clean ride. The noise is not objectionable. You're not getting anything on your face. I believe we'll see a lot of cars. I, I believe this is the beginning of the end of the slingshot as we know it today. The rear engine dragster is certainly not a new idea, but it was never successful, mainly due to handling problems, and you have absolutely none. That's right. You know, uh, you notice on the second day, I got a little out of shape about halfway down when I ran in an oil slick and had no problem coming out of it which was a good test, and then the smoking the tires there on that run shows that the car handled very nicely, even with the tires loose. So uh, I really don't know why they never have worked before. Uh, I think possibly it was a combination of tires and clutch. The things that we have today make it possible where they didn't have those a few years ago. Well, you are truly the big daddy after this.